Hi, welcome back to the Couch Crew. This is Andrew, and this is our new segment called The Magic Corner. It's where we talk about decks that we've made and how they work. So I've made a Esper uh, Constellation deck, which is a white-blue-black enchantment deck. So, let's get down to the cards. So first we're going to start with our Constellation 2. Two guys. So these guys are the Underworld Coinsmith and the Grim Guardian. Underworld Coinsmith is a 2-drop white-black, and the Grim Guardian is a 3-drop, uh, 1 black, 2 colorless. Uh, they are both enchantment creatures, so they both trigger Constellation, and, their con and the Underworld Coinsmith Constellation is whenever Underworld Coinsmith or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. Really cool, really useful. Uh, he's also a 2-2, two -two, and, and the Grim Guardian is a 1-4. You can play a white and a black and pay one life. Each opponent loses a life on the Underworld Coinsmith, which you won't be using because of the Grim, Grim Guardian's Constellation is whenever Grim Guardian or another enchantment enters the battlefield, each opponent loses a life. So you never have to pay a life, and you never have to do sh stupid shit like that. So, they work really well together, which is awesome. Let's get those out of there. On to the next two. We've got a Nyx Fleece Ram and a Riptide uh, Chimera. So we'll start with the Nyx Fleece Ram. Nyx Fleece Ram is in here just because he's a utility to gain life. But he's also enchantment so he triggers everything else. He's a 0-5-2 drop. At the beginning of your upkeep you gain one life. Really useful, really cool. Now, the star player of, the, of this whole thing and why I made it Esper is the Riptide Chimera. Riptide Chimera is a 3 drop 3-4 three, flying. At the beginning of your upkeep, you return an enchantment you control to its owner's hand. So, let's see if I can get all these guys in the frame. Cool. So now, with these three, you can trigger multiple enchantments a turn with this combination. Because then you return an enchantment you control, and you play it again. Everyone loses a life, and I gain a life. And then you just keep doing that back and forth. Really, really useful. So let's get on with the get on to the enchantments that you would use. We'll leave Riptide Chimera out here, up here in the corner. All right. So first, we got Scourge Mark. Scourge Mark is a uh, two-drop uh, black enchantment. Enchanted creature gets one zero, uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Really useful with Riptide Chimera because you get to draw a card and trigger the rest of the constellation. That's what the, all these enchantments will be from for now will be they also trigger constellation. Next we have uh Stricewalk. Stricewalk when it enters the battlefield you draw a card. Uh enchanted creature has flying and the can only the only downfall, in my opinion, is that it can only block creatures with flying. So a lot of people will be like, oh the, you can't block anything else. But you can actually use that on other opponents' creatures too. So you'd be like, well, now only you can block flying, and you only have one creature out, and I have a whole bunch of ground creatures. Really useful for that reason. And it lets you draw a card. And we got a Fate Foretold. Another blue two drop enchantment that lets you draw a card, and when an enchanted creature dies, its controller draws a card. So it doesn't really do anything except for make, let me draw cards for two. And our last enchantment, that's an aura, is Chosen by Heliod. 2 drop white. When it enters battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature gets 0 2 until, or not until end of turn, just gets 0 2. So, with those triggering with Riptide Chimera and the rest of the Constellation cards, they're really, really good because it gives you a lot of draw speed. So now we'll get on to the second star the Hero of Iros. Now, Hero of Iros is a 2 drop 2 2. Aura spells you cast, cost one less to cast. So, if you noticed, let's get all these guys back out here, sort of, if I can. Doing this for the first time. Sorry if I am a little not prepared. So, if you noticed all my enchantment auras, they cost two, which is which was why I put them in the deck to begin with. Well, that's and they let me draw cards, but with the Hero of Iros out, I can cast all of these enchantments for one instead of two, which is really powerful because since they let me draw a whole bunch of cards, if I draw into more of those enchantments, I can play more of those enchantments. And 
I can also play them on the Hero of Iris and trigger his heroic ability, which is whenever he casts a spell that targets him, he gets a plus one plus one counter. Like I've been able to get him six counters in one turn, making him an eight eight. I mean, I don't know about you, but an eight eight for a little to nothing is really powerful to me. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but I like that. So we'll get Rip Tychmere back out here for this last regular enchantment, and we'll get on to the grand finale, I guess. Banishing Light. Okay. So Banishing Light is O-Ring reprinted, uh, which means its uh, abilities have been combined because original O-Ring had its abilities separated. So this one says, when it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent in opponent controls until, end, until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. It used to be, O-Ring used to say, when it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent opponent controls. Stop, that's the end of the sentence. When O-Ring leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card under the opponent's control. So, or at least somewhat of a wording to that, I'm pretty sure I got that wrong, and if I didn't, if I did, I'm sorry. But, that means that you can't break it. But that's okay, because Riptide Chimera breaks it for me, kind of. Because, since Blanishing Light is just an enchantment, I can play it, kill somebody off, and it'll, be, and it'll still be on the field no matter what. Or just an enchantment aura would go away if it was enchanted on a creature that someone killed. So I can bounce it back to my hand using Riptide Chimera and retarget something more threatening that has come into play. Which is way super powerful, and I love it. Alright, on to the last one. Which is Phoenix, God of Deception, five drop, four seven, indestructible god. The main reason why he's in here is he's an enchantment creature, so you know, why not? The second main reason he's in here is for his ability. So as long as your devotion to blue and black is less than seven, he isn't a creature, which isn't a problem in this deck because all of my other all of my spells in the deck are permanents. In his second ability, sorry there I had to burp. Uh, creatures you control have tap. Target target player puts the top X cards into his or her library where X is that creature's toughness. So like I said, with the Hero of Iros, that means that, you know how I said I could get him up to six counters in a turn? That's eight. That means I can mill somebody for eight. That's super powerful. And especially with all the draw which means I'll be playing more enchantments on him, it'll just be, I can probably, if I get Phoenix out at the right time, I can kill somebody in a turn. End of their turn, I mill them for like half their deck, and then on my turn, I mill them for half their deck, and I win. So, that is the Esper Constellation deck. I hope you enjoyed this segment. If you did, subscribe, press the like button, leave a comment. I'm always... Uh, Good for feedback and uh, deck suggestions and card suggestions for this deck. Uh, keep in mind that I currently, because I like to challenge myself, I want to keep it more Theros block. I don't want to add Ravnica. This is standard as of uh, as of May 22nd. So yeah. Um, but. Yeah, uh, I'll put the deck list up in the description, and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, bye.